Right, okay, so this is probably a special night. It's been about a year since we've had guests up to the house legally to allow them in and to cook for them. So pretty much tonight what the plan is, is to make some ribs. So I went and found my good friend Ben up at Cleaver and Steel and he set me up with some amazing ribs and a nice bit of uh, pork that I can do on the smoker. So the plan is to basically leave it all day just to build up as much smoke as we can into it, wrap them and then take them off and kind of serve them in their own sort of dinner time. So need to get cracking because there's a lot to be done. So the main thing that you want to look at whenever you're, you're doing any sort of pulled pork is to use one of these, which is a meter. And basically you just pop that into the, the meaty bit of your meat and it'll keep an eye on it for you. Make sure that it's, it's getting up to temperature. And that's pretty much it. So that is that piece of meat done. It's ready to go into the smoker. We've already got the smoker on the go. And then I got this little machine because normally I just do two sets of ribs just for my family because two sets is enough for everybody. But Tonight, we're gonna stack these things up in this little device. So I bought this on Amazon, and you basically set your ribs in this way. So we'll find out how this works. Could be absolutely a total mess, or it might really work out well. So the last thing, which is the thing that I'm actually excited about, is that I was speaking to a friend of mine called Jim, and he had said to me that there's different types of woods, obviously, for smoking, but this is cherry wood, and cherry wood is like the king for giving you like that red color on your meat. So with ribs, you want that kind of red, smoky looking loveliness, and this stuff is the trick for it. So we've got like these lovely big chunks all in this box. This cost me like 20 pound on Amazon. I think it's an absolute steal, especially after what happened to me last time that I pretty much bought, it was like buying the six magic beans in the, the story from Jack and the Beanstalk. But I got probably about that much of wood the last time for a tenner. So I've got like a, a massive amount of them for this. So if you want any information on where to get those on Amazon, I'll stick the wee link in the description. Right, so plan of attack is to get this thing on the smoke, so I'm gonna bring it out now and I'll show you how to do the, the actual smoke ring, how to set up your snake, how to get your smoke all working, and it's great. Okay, it's a bit rainy right now, but it, it should clear up. So the idea is snake method, which is pretty much just loads of coal. So you can see here, we've just got all our coals and we just basically set them around a nice little arc. I hate using a good hand because this hand always ends up getting really dirty so I've been trying to use gloves as much as possible but it doesn't really happen the way you want it. So snakey snakey snake, just put all these round and then these kind of like, like kind of seal the deal along the top. So it's like the simplest way to, to cook any sort of meat is to use this kind of snake method, it's just, it's foolproof and it keeps your temperature in around like 120 most of the time. And it doesn't move as long as you don't open this lid, it'll kind of just stay there the whole time. So that's probably enough for what I want. So what I'll be doing now is putting little chunks of, of my wood along the top here. And then we're gonna light this end like a fuse and this basically burns its way down. So really simple, you've seen it before, it's really good. So I've upgraded my life a wee bit and I'm starting to use these little eco friendly pieces of uh, kindling and basically all we're doing now is we're just lighting it's getting rainy but we're basically just lighting a couple of coals in the top here and this starts the fuse off so we'll get them going and basically what I've been doing here is using some of like my old charcoals that have been lying around inside the, the barbecue for the last one waste what waste not want not so I'm not too sure what cherry wood actually looks like I'm guessing that it's gonna look redder than most other wood so this looks a good candidate and maybe not that one but maybe this one here looking pretty cherry ish what do you think Belle so here we go there's all our nice little wood chunks in so this is now ready to go Bring this over. There you go, that's the fuse starting and then it'll kind of just wind its way down in. And the last thing I want to do now is just cut with hot water. Make a little water bath. 
Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so you can see this thing is actually smoking already. I've kind of got set up to go. So we're just gonna drop this on over the top of where the water is. There we go, beautiful. Is that done? Easy. Right, so here is my meat, my meat holder. I've got that stage in knife where I own my own meat holder, so I'm trying to do this. I don't make a mess of myself. Just basically dropping our meat in like that. This is how that's looking. It's packed. It's an absolute meat fest in there. So, so the plan is to basically leave this knife for. So we'll let the smoke come up and over and, and out here then. And it's going to sit for the rest of the day. Right, so the last thing I want to do today is make some coleslaw. And coleslaw is probably one of the easiest things in the world to make that looks really complicated and the markup on it is ridiculous. So pretty much what we're going to do here is use a, a red cabbage, as they say up in Cullibaggy. <laughs> That's me losing everybody that actually like me from Cullibaggy now. Right, so what I'm going to do is basically just take off these outside leaves because They've had all the pesticides and stuff all stuck onto them, so you really don't want to be putting them into your nice coleslaw. Okay, so that's that, that's that peel. So the thing about coleslaw is that once you make your own, it's going to be probably impossible for you to ever want to go back to buying store-bought stuff. So here we are, lovely red cabbage, and what we're going to do is just grate that into here. So just use the, the big slicey bit on your, your grater. Oh, my hand. So the only thing about making coleslaw is that it actually does make a bit of a mess because you can see here it's a bit of like a, there's a lot of stuff happening, but you get all these lovely shreds of, of lettuce, you get these lovely shreds of, of cabbage that you can drop in then. So pretty much just rattle your way through as much cabbage as you could stick. That's all our cabbage coming in. So it's a lovely color actually stains your hands even whenever you're doing it. I think I'm gonna go in with like a bit of a cabbage and a half. Or a half of a cabbage actually I'm gonna go in with. So my wife promised me that if I'd done all this, she was gonna actually clean up today, which is lovely. So I can kind of get away with making a bit more mess than usual. And this is just a quick way to clean a car can't be bothered peeling it, you just run a knife down it. Okay, and then same thing on that, but except we're gonna use this side of the grater now for these. So I don't know why it took me so long in life to actually learn the that it's so easy to make this stuff and that it's an absolute crime that you're spending money in the shops grabbing it. Okay, so that's our carrots then. So I'm just gonna give that a little ring, just take out some of the water from these. Like that and then just drop in our carrots in into the top and then the last thing that I like to do is with just a bit of onion so you can use white onion or red onion or basically whatever's in your kitchen I'm gonna go with red and you don't want tons of red onion you just want to enough I keep promising myself that the next time I'm out in like a shop I'm gonna buy myself a better variation of this with more like blade options so you can have like different sizes and stuff but these here are great but taking the water out of the the onions as well oh there's a sting in my eyes so that's our onions in as well oh my goodness Woo. right so that's that all all made basically i'm just give us a little toss around so i might add just a bit more carrot so then all we need to do now is just mayo and just drop in the mayo And then Dijon mustard. You just want to go in with about a, a good two teaspoons of that. So there's one, two, one with three actually. And then the last little secret to everything is a bit of apple cider vinegar. And that just gives a bit of tartness to it. So enough just to activate it. 
and then give all that just a nice little mix around and that's it done you just leave this sitting inside the fridge now and it's the nicest coleslaw jeepers creepers she did all right make a mess Okay, and that's it done. So we can just leave that now. So we could add a little bit of chili or we could just leave it as it sits and we'll come back to that later. So the important bit is get it into the fridge and that's it. This is the thing, okay? So if you're going out under a wet... Yes? You're going out under a wet dirty patio to a wet floor that I've just mopped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those are the shoes. So I don't know if you could hear there, that, that was Lindsay shouting at me. So every time I go to try and cook something, there's always a bit of an issue. So here we go. This is what we've made. This is the beauty that we've, we've produced so far. So basically going to lift this rack out and then set them in under some foil. So here we go. Action. We're just going to put some butter on these now. So we're just putting some butter on these now. I'm going to say some butter, I mean actually a ridiculous amount of butter, but as I've always said and I'll always continue to say is that butter is not your enemy, butter is your friend. So there we go, wrap us up. Okay, so into the oven these things go. That's a massive amount of ribs. And on 120, and we're just leaving them. You see this for our rib hole? How these on the go all day? Look at these, it's just rib. Good city. Look at this. No, no. There's no rush to the bank. Now, if I lived on my own, I would probably eat everything like super late because I'm always less impatient to eat. But whenever you've got people coming, you absolutely have to have everything sitting ready for them. It's probably a better way to plate all this, but. This is what we're going with for today. And then this is our pulled pork as well, so I'm just going to leave this sitting for a wee minute. 